gentlemen, may I please have your attention? Please have your tickets in hand before you board the plane. Thank you. Hello and welcome to Wings. I'm Johan Castell bringing you this week's episode from the gorgeous village of Kumaun in India's Uttarakhand state. On the show today we bring you a story from the hills of an event called Seclude Creators Club, where social media influencers and content creators meet for a weekend of fun. Chinese New Year 2024 is here. Let's look at the exciting preparations worldwide and celebrations from the annual festival. Next, we travel to a quaint village in Vietnam, which has become a travel hotspot for Instagram savvy tourists. Our first story of this episode is from Ramgar in India's Uttarakhand state as we visit the Seclude Creators Club. This event is all about creating a space for content creators to get together, socialize and make memories together in the hills. The journey to Ramgar in Uttarakhand begins with a train ride from New Delhi railway station in the morning. As the train departs, there is a jolly atmosphere among the group of people I am joined by for the trip to the hills. We slowly see the sun rise over the dew-covered fields along the train tracks. All right, what is included? We're getting a little tea kit, tea and a biscuit. And a welcome note. Some delicious Indian chai. And after getting food and snacks on the train, there's time for a nap before reaching Kathgodam train station. From there we take a car that brings us up a steep terrain along narrow switchbacks in the road. And at some places the fog is so thick it's hard to see the road. After a few hours on the road we reach our destination, Seclude Ramgar Willows. The hotel, with views over the expansive valleys of the Fruit Bowl of Kumaun, is now the weekend home for a group of creators from across India. Hi, Shiv. Nice to meet you. Nice to see you, Shiv. Nice to meet you. Who have been invited to come and practice their craft at a special event at the property. Beginning with a property tour with the creators, everyone gets their rooms and companions assigned. before it's time for a trek to a viewpoint not far away. Well, there's quite a few people here. We're not the only ones who thought of coming to Ramgar. We end our first day at a spot called Cliff's Edge. We made it just in time to see the rain on the cliff. Where we have a cup of tea before heading back and calling it a night. The next day, the clouds were all around us in the morning, but the weather can change quickly in the hills. We got lucky and had a sunny moment early in the day to sit down and get some insights from Sonali on this event. What are you hoping to achieve with this event or with this uh, gathering of people? We're hoping to form a community of creators but what we do try to do is curate an itinerary that brings out mm. the best of what we have to offer do you think that 
uh, as you go forward with this model that you'll keep inviting the same people or that you'll have a complete reshuffle for every event? We want people from all over India to come mm. and visit and so we reach out to people mm. from all over India and we focus on people whose content we liked, we could relate to, we mm. found it funny. Mm. Speaking of what you have to offer, what, have you, what do you have in store for us for the program? Mm. So we keep the first day light, but we keep mm. the second day action packed. Yeah, true. So right after this, we're going to jump into a Zumba session. All right. We've planned a pottery painting session. Mm. Okay. And um, so we tried to get the pots locally from the mm. Local community, and uh, we carried the paints from Delhi. We are in a mm. very remote location. Yeah. And after that, we plan a little surprise. Uh, it's a surprise lunch, <laughs> and then we've planned a gala night. Oh, nice! A red okay. carpet night. Yeah. At the red carpet night, mm. we um, have a little bit of appreciation for the creators. Mm. We do a little bit of. Um, that is a surprise. That I will yeah, not yeah, yeah. tell. We'll, we'll take that as <laughs> yeah. it comes. Yeah. No, that sounds great. <laughs> Today's packed schedule kicks off with a Zumba session as the weather has worsened. I can't believe this is like an actual real dance. Look at this, they're all synchronized. The group is fully consumed by the sounds of this popular Indian dance form, but for me, it's a foreign experience. After the Zumba session concludes, some people participate in an impromptu dance session outside. Next is a pottery painting session on the sunny terrace. We get a clay pot or cup assigned to us and begin after quick instructions. Painting in itself is very relaxing because your entire mind is focused on the strokes of your uh, brush and everything. So just leave out all the thoughts, just calm yourself down and paint. I start with a solid white base paint and feel like an artist while painting. The intense sun at this high altitude makes the paint dry quickly. The painters in making apply a wide variety of motifs, colors, patterns and themes. I finish my pot with many small Indian flags on it. Home is where the heart is. The team set up a picnic with chocolate croissants, muffins, fruit platters, spinach quiche, non-veg and vegetarian puffs and different lemonades and juices. A super photogenic treat. There are so many things to do here at the event, from a balloon game to a tug of war with a human chain. This group is full of energy. So what do the creators who are a part of this event have to say about it? I honestly had so much fun to just um, be here with other creators. It honestly does not even feel like we have met just before two days. I found it amazing these one and a half days were one of the best days of my life. You know, from Zumba sessions to late night parties to content creation to picnics and I don't know what not. I don't know. I've never seen this side to a creators meet. My experience with Creators Club Seclude is very lovely. This was different, unique and full of fun. The event concludes with a gala dinner party for the participants with awards, good food and even fireworks. We socialize by the bonfire that keeps us warm as the temperature at night is just above freezing. After eating cake and watching fireworks, the event is over. And if I ever had a chance to attend again, I'd be there in a heartbeat. 
The mood for celebrations for the Chinese New Year is supercharged worldwide. Are you curious to know about it and how it is celebrated? In our next report, we show how millions around the world ring in the Chinese Year of the Dragon. Colorful and majestic celebrations are in full swing to ring in the Chinese New Year on the 10th of February. Falling on the first new moon of the lunar calendar, the auspicious date is generally between the 21st of January and the 20th of February each year. 2024 is the year of the dragon, one of 12 signs in the Chinese zodiac that changes on a repeating cycle every year. The dragon symbolizes power, justice, versatility and nobleness. It is the emperor's symbol and is viewed as the symbol of the Chinese nation. Traditionally, the grandest occasion for family reunions in China, the Spring Festival, is the start of the Chinese Lunar New Year. It is also observed by Chinese communities worldwide. Let's look at the festive fervor that has gripped different places across the globe on this occasion. At nightfall in Paris, more than 2,000 colorful lanterns illuminate the Jardin de Climatation, the oldest amusement park in the city. For showgoers, it was a spectacular fusion of Chinese and Western cultures. For some Chinese visitors, the festival is a way of sharing their culture and customs with the broader world. Shanghai's landmark, Yu Yuan Garden, lit up with different festive lanterns, even zodiac dragon lanterns. The Lantern Show provided visitors a visual treat and a chance to try Shanghai's delicacies and special purchases for the Spring Festival. A Buddhist temple in Malaysia is bright with sparkling lanterns for celebrating the Lunar New Year. Held annually since 2004, the dazzling light show matches the Year of the Dragon. With scores of illuminated dragon structures, the festive decorations liven up the Dongzhen Temple in the coastal town of Jenjerom. The fifth Grand Parade of the Happy Spring Festival was kicked off at the Burj Khalifa Park in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates. It attracted hundreds of overseas Chinese and local residents to the lively Spring Festival. Visitors tasted a variety of food preparations and attended cultural activities. The Chinese New Year is a vibrant festival for any Chinese community worldwide and is always a treat for the eyes. As a traveller visiting a city with a sizeable Chinese population, experiencing this festive period is a must if it is taking place during your visit. Do you like to document your wanderlust whereabouts on social media? If you do, you can head to this tiny, curious Vietnamese village that is taking over Instagram for its incense stick-making craft. Yes, you heard me right. Take a look. Welcome to the scenic village of Quang Phu Cao on the outskirts of Hanoi in Vietnam. By harnessing the power of social media, this small village is building itself into an unmissable Instagram hotspot. It is one of the several villages across Vietnam involved in the ancient incense stick trade. Families living and working in this incense village have been in the business of making incense sticks for generations. Picking more vibrant colors now, the craftspersons aim to make it all more appealing to Instagram-friendly travelers. Look at the hundreds of bundles of multicolored sticks arranged as a giant Vietnamese map. Countries also, but I have never seen anything like this one. So in terms of experience, uh, I think this is new for us. And then the place is very nice, very colorful, and it's, it's really an Instagram-worthy place. The villagers make a healthy sum of money from the selfie snappers chaperoned by helpful staff. For about $2, tourists can take pictures with the workshop sticks as long as they like. Surprisingly, these sticks cost just 50 cents for a pack of 20. A metal stairway has been erected at a nearby home to allow for more panoramic shots from above. This time, the village is packed and busy with orders pouring in ahead of the Lunar New Year celebrations, known as Tet in Vietnam. For craftspersons like Dang Thi Hua, 
whose family has been in this business for three generations now. This has brought due recognition to this ancient craft and those practicing it for decades. I'm proud of our family's traditional craft and I love my job. I also feel happy as the village has become more well known. From exquisite crafts to unique festivals, the diversity in our world never ceases to amuse. Next up, we take a look at some cultural gems on UNESCO's coveted representative list for the intangible cultural heritage of humanity. From vibrant dresses and ornaments to one-of-a-kind traditions of all hues, there are thousands of unique cultures around the world that UNESCO actively preserves. Let's look at some of these fascinating cultural gems that find a royal mention on UNESCO's representative list of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity. The ancient craft of mother-of-pearl inlay is known and cherished. Last year, the craftsmanship of mother-of-pearl inlay was inscribed on the UNESCO Intangible Heritage List. And in Azerbaijan, the few remaining masters hope the recognition will help attract new artisans to the trade. The art of mother-of-pearl inlay dates back to the 3rd to 5th millennia and has survived. And in Azerbaijan, this challenging skill has been passed down through generations of artisans. Artisans draw beautiful, intricate motifs on mother-of-pearl pieces. These are cut into small bits and inlaid into wood, creating stunning mirrors, jewellery boxes and even musical instruments. The surface is then polished to create a smooth, glossy finish. These stunning inlays are made as per the craft traditions of various regions of Azerbaijan, which the UNESCO recognition will hopefully preserve. Now to the quaint town of Pernik in Bulgaria, where the Surova festival was recently held. An annual three-day carnival and Bulgaria's oldest, the Surova tradition was inscribed on the UNESCO Intangible Heritage List in 2015. More than 10,000 masked dancers fill the streets with vibrant performances. Their dances are aimed at driving out evil spirits and symbolically marking the final days of winter, bringing in a good harvest, health, fertility and happiness. The performers, called kukeri or mamas, perform their mystic dances on the streets. With huge copper bells tucked around their waists, they walk through people's houses, ringing bells loudly to drive away evil spirits and bring positivity to the people. In the tiny village of Hamri in the Czech Republic, colourful Shrovetide processions took place with much pomp. Marking the end of winter and welcoming spring, the celebrations happened during Shrovetide, one of the sacred periods before Easter. The tradition was inscribed on the UNESCO Intangible Heritage List in 2010 and celebrated with a lot of enthusiasm. Village men and boys dress up as characters in masks and march from door to door. With the householder's permission, they perform a ritual dance to call for a good harvest and prosperity for the family. In return, the masked men either collect money or receive gifts and treats. Finally, when the last house has been visited, a symbolic condemnation and killing of the mayor occurs. The mayor is condemned for alleged sins and a comical testament is read before it is symbolically executed. But the mayor is then revived with alcohol, signalling the start of dancing and festivities.
Finally, let's head to Morocco, famous for its ancient crafts. In the heart of Fez, skilled artisans have been practicing some ancient metal engraving techniques. The skills of using gold, silver and copper to create delicate designs have been passed down through generations. Recently, UNESCO inscribed these old techniques in its coveted intangible heritage list. Beginning in Morocco around the 19th century, the process starts with carefully selecting high-quality copper and making accurate measurements. Next comes the engraving stage, from botanical elements borrowed from nature to more imaginative abstract motifs, inspiration can be found virtually anywhere. Morocco aims to protect and promote the identity woven into each meticulously crafted piece by recognizing metal engraving as part of its cultural heritage. That's all we have for you in this week's episode of Wings, but we'll return again next weekend. Before we go, we'll leave you with visuals of fresh snowfall in Kashmir. I am Johan Castell, signing off. Goodbye.